Roll for Optimism by Blue Oatmeal. You've never been up here? Quirrell asked, nudging the elevator's lever. Of course not! Lem crossed his arms. Too many guards. Besides, something about this building is especially unsettling. He glanced over his shoulder at the dark hall behind them. And then there's the reputation. Quirrell left the elevator and stepped towards an ornate archway. I know it's called the Soul Sanctum, but I'm afraid I can't remember much else. He glanced back as he wandered into the room. What have you learned about it? Lem looked around warily. I don't know how much is true, mind you, but supposedly there were some bugs doing experiments with soul. Kind of cultish. They might have been trying to ascend to a higher plane of existence or something. Maybe they were trying to be gods. He let Quirrell help him up some platforms and up through a hole to the next floor. Whatever it was, it was very grandiose and abstract, if the remaining records are any indication. Many saw it as nothing more than a bunch of wacky religious zealots. Some said they actually accomplished something unnatural. Gorgeous, Quirrell breathed, staring up at an ornate window. He tilted his head as he processed Lem's words. They don't sound too bad, all things considered. He peered down the hall before deciding to board the next elevator. Certainly not the worst Hollownest has to offer, he muttered. They'd agreed to survey the place before raiding it. Lem marveled at the expansive rooms filled with odd trinkets and machinery, while Quirrell poked his head into every new doorway, curious to see where they led. The conspicuously black corridor was irresistible. Be careful, Lem warned. It's dark in there. I don't think there's anything in here, Coral mused. He cautiously stalked down the hall. Oh, oh, I think a friend has been here, he said, pointing with his nail to a more recently disturbed pile of rocks. I bet they knocked this hole in the wall. From the other side, it looks like. He ducked through the rough opening and clambered down the ledge beyond. Quirrell! Lem protested. You can't just! He heard a soft thud, followed by Quirrell's echoing voice from below. Aha! It is dark. We should have brought a lantern. I can barely see down here. It's almost as bad as Deep Nest. That's one place I'm not following you into, Lem grumbled. He kneeled at the ledge and leaned out, trying to get a good look with what little light there was. Well, anything interesting? The floor isn't flat, Quirrell called. He took a few steps, noting the severe unevenness of the ground. He scuffed his foot on the floor. I think... He bent down and felt the surface with his hand. Ah, it appears I've landed on a pile of corpses. Lucky you. Lem deadpanned. Imagine that, a bunch of dead bodies just lying about. What a novel sight. Coral snicker echoed up from the floor. <laughs> See if you can find a light, would you? I think this room is bigger than I thought. You'd best stay up there for now, unless you fancy a steep climb back up. Yeah, no thanks, Lem said. I'll try and snatch one of the Lumafly lanterns we passed earlier. I'll be back in a minute. Quirrell saw his silhouette disappear from above and heard his footsteps retreat towards the open room they'd previously been perusing. He held his arms out from his sides for balance as he walked further. It certainly was a large pile. Perhaps the soul sanctum had gotten up to more malevolent activities than he'd thought. If he could just find the actual floor or a wall, he could get a better idea of the room's size. It took a while to reach a wall, and all the way over... The carpet of carapaces hadn't given way to any kind of normal surface. He felt for the wall he could sense in front of him, and shuddered as his hand dipped into a bug's eye hole. He pulled back! But just as quickly, he reached out again, exploring the wall's surface. It was all corpses. All of it. A face here, folded legs there, cracked chitin, and the feathered branches of old wings. He shook himself dispelling the chill that had begun to seep through the chinks in his shell. Despite his gradually accelerating heartbeat, his investigation continued. 
He searched along the wall, grimly identifying the body parts of several of Hollow Nut's many different species. His hand brushed over a smooth shell with no obvious imperfections. A thought struck him, and he prodded the corpse with particular interest. The face was intact, still wearing its mask. All the limbs were present and in their proper places. There were no wounds or weak points in the shell. What had killed this bug? Context clues would point to soul magics, but for what purpose? Target practice? There were hundreds, maybe even thousands, just lying where they'd been tossed, discarded, like fruit rinds after a meal. Drained, his mind supplied. Drained of w But there could only be one answer, of course. This was the soul sanctum, after all. Were they volunteers? Members? No, they could never recruit this many willing participants, even with deception. Did they simply pick them up off the streets? The city seemed cleaner, less crowded. Someone had claimed to be helping out the less fortunate, giving them places to live and jobs to work. What? Don't linger in the city. Monomon instructed lightly, looking away as she rearranged a shelf of files. Especially after dark. Wait. The guard shrugged. I don't think they'll reach immortality, but they might be able to stop the plague, sure. But while I appreciate your interest, I'm afraid I can't let you inside. No, no. They took my daughter! A bug screeched as security hauled her away. They took my baby! She sobbed as she struggled to get free. You have to stop this, my king, please. You have to believe. No, no, no. Blessed to have so many volunteers. It's incredible what lynx bugs are willing to go to protect their loved ones. We've already made some very promising advances. They will all be rewarded, of course, for their work towards this most noble cause. No, stop. For what he was told was a simple mugging. The scream had been like nothing he'd ever heard. The most gut-clenching, heart-stopping, soul-wrenching! Stop, 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 stop! Faces, shells, bugs he spoke with, bugs he passed on the street, a set of triplets, musicians, a noble bug dripping with gemstones, a maintenance team tending bravely to the windows at the top of the towers, shopkeepers, entertainers, workers, nobility, families! He recognized them. He knew these bugs. Not all, but far too many. Here, a young guard he'd spoken to briefly. Shell now cracked with age and the weight of hundreds of dead bugs. Here, a petty criminal, known throughout the city but tolerated for their charming demeanor. Their pretty face now a stepping stone on the floor. Here, the mother whose daughter had disappeared. Arms and legs stiffly curled in on themselves. Quirrell backed up and pressed his fists into his forehead. His mind hadn't been flooded by so many memories since he gave up his... Monomon's mask. He tried to keep hold of them, for even unpleasant memories were precious. But they leaked from his mind like water from a sieve, leaving only impressions and emotions. Strong impressions and emotions. He recognized so, so many of them. Some from only a greeting while passing by, some from extended friendships, most in ways he couldn't consciously recall. They were here. And they were dead. I found a lamp, Lem called, walking down the hall to kneel at the ledge with a large Lumify lantern. Anything in Gods, what is- I know you said it was a pile of dead bugs, but this- What in damnation! He dangled the light into the cavernous room. Quarrel! He heard his own voice echo. Lem put the light aside and leaned forward, listening closely. Nothing. Silent as the grave. Quarrel! He shouted as loud as he could. Where are you? He waited a few seconds, then leaned all the way out and braced for a hard landing. 
Once down, Lem ran unsteadily for the far wall, where his lamp revealed one shell that retained its proper coloring, just a few shades off from the surrounding corpses. Also, there was a nail strapped to it. Quarrel! He stumbled over Sunbug's arm with a curse and managed to land next to his friend. Quarrel, don't you dare! He shook the spherical shell and pried at the individual plates. This is no time to be playing dead! Instead of opening up, Quarrel curled tighter. Lem scowled and forced himself to let go and sit down. He tugged frustratedly at one of his own horns. All right, all right, he grumbled. He stared, unsure what to say. I don't know what's got you so freaked out, but I'm going to stay here until you unwind. You do that, and we can leave, okay? He frowned into the darkness. Nothing's moving, he reported. It's just us in here, nobody else. I've got a light now, not that our surroundings are particularly picturesque. After a minute of silence, Quirrell uncurled a bit. A hand extended slowly from his shell to turn him over, and he relaxed until he was sitting with his knees hugged to his chest. He stared at the ground for a moment, then turned to his companion. Lem. They killed them. They killed them all. He shivered and rubbed his mask between his eyes. Lem shuffled closer. Are you all right? What happened? He tilted his head. Who killed who? Quirrell played with a knot in his bandana, staring into the dark again. The soul sanctum. They... All of the, these bugs, they didn't die of infection. I thought... He shook his head violently. I'm trying to piece it together, but it's all... fuzzy. Are you okay? Lem repeated, when it was clear Quirrell had nothing more to add. He took a deep breath. <sighs> We're not in danger. He assured him. That's not what I asked, Lem pointed out. Quarrel. Uh? He met Lem's gaze. What, me? Oh, I, I just, th this place triggered a memory and I got a bit, uh... He shrugged. Overwhelmed. It's, m my reaction wasn't truly wanted. It was more automatic than anything. He swiftly got to his feet. A little troubling, even. It's no good to suddenly lose one's composure. Even with the infection gone, these halls remain treacherous. His voice was just a little too tight. He adjusted his bandana. Shall we go? Lem stared up at him incredulously. What? Even in the dim light, he noticed the way Quirrell clutched his nail and how his free hand twitched as he tried to maintain a calm, self-assured posture. Sure, he conceded, standing. We can get out of this pit. But, uh, what kind of memory? Why'd you shut down like that? Quirrell jumped onto a ledge and looked back, where Lem was beginning to climb the wall of bodies, finding easy handholds in the various limbs that curled back into the corpses like hooks. I... I think I recognize a few... bugs... here. He kept his eyes up, focusing on the ledge that led into the hallway above them. Lem paused about halfway up, turning to look at the face of the corpse he was using as a handhold. Oh, I can see how that would be, uh, upsetting, he ventured. Quirrell hummed an acknowledgement as he made it to the top and lunged into the corridor. While Lem pulled himself up the steep wall and over the edge, Quirrell stood further down the hall, frowning at the floor. Lem huffed and walked over. Quirrell, he said softly. He started at the sound of his name, flinching and turning wide eyes to him. Yes? Lem walked past him, casually taking his hand and urging him along. 
I think that's enough adventuring for today. Quirrell turned to him to protest, but Len cut him off. Personally, I need a break from this spooky place. Unless you've got your heart set on scouring the entire sanctum today, he said, glancing over. Quirrell visibly relaxed. No, no, it, it can wait. He tightened his hand around Lem's. After a quiet walk down from the city's heights, the two of them sat comfortably in a room behind Lem's shop. Lem sat sideways at a cluttered desk while Quirrell slouched over a small table. Both nursed hot cups of tea. Lem broke the silence. If you don't want to talk about it. Quirrell waved his hand and put down the teacup. No, no, I do. I will. He sighed. Ah, thank you for getting me out of there. Lem gave a small shrug. Quarrel cleared his throat. <clears> throat. I apparently spent a fair amount of time in the city back before the infection. Enough that I could identify broadly who those bugs were. He took a deep breath. Half the population of the city of tears, Lem. He looked up from the table. Half. He nodded slowly, frowning. Not volunteers, he clarified, nor members of the sect. They were kidnapped or coerced. I'd thought that bugs were leaving the city in droves or succumbing to the plague. But instead, they were snatched up and slaughtered, drained of life. They did who knows what with all the soul. He folded his hands and leaned his head on them. It's stupid, really. I've seen death before. We all have. I don't know why. The grief, the horror, I just... It was too much. I don't know why. Lem listened, silently sipping his tea. I froze, my mind drowned in images, half-imagined sensations. What might have happened to them all, I wondered. Was there anything I could have done? How did I miss something this heinous was? He swallowed, and his fingers tightened. Did I know? Did Monomon know? I have to imagine the king knew. Little details I'd noticed. Why didn't I piece them together at the time? His voice dropped to a whisper. I feel guilty. I was there, in the city, while it was happening. How could I have missed this? Worse, was I involved? He shook his head. It was too much all at once. It felt like someone had taken a nail to my head. I wanted to cry. I remember feeling dizzy. From there, it's all hazy. He sighed, quirking a smile. And then you... <laughs> Lem looked up sharply. Quirrell stifled a giggle. <laughs> I thought the corpses had come to life and were attacking me. He snorted and leaned forward. You realize that, if you want to stop a bug's defense response, shaking them isn't going to help? Lem dipped his head. I wasn't thinking straight, he mumbled. Quirrell smirked into his cup. Yes, well, that makes two of us. Lem was quiet for a minute, then tilted his head. It seems like you've sorted yourself out logically, but I can see you're still worked up. I'm no expert on this sort of thing, but maybe you should try approaching it from a more emotional angle. Quirrell gave him a puzzled look. I thought I was? He shook his head. Wrapping it into a neat package of words doesn't resolve what you're feeling, and I can't really counter with my own words anyway, because I don't know a thing about the whole situation. You could have been the head of the operation for all I know. Quirrell looked sick at the very idea, so Lem quickly backpedaled. I mean, I, I don't know about the events in the past, these ones anyway, but I do know you, and you're not the kind of person who could ever tolerate such atrocities if you had even the slightest hint that they might be happening. You're too nice. 
Besides, they were so secretive and manipulative that they disappeared half of a city, and people still didn't think of them as anything more than just a weird cult. It wasn't just you. Lem put his cup down. Look, just... He got up and put his hands on his hips. Stand up. Curl gave him an inquisitive look, but obeyed, stepping away from the table. Lem raised his arms, hesitating a moment to give Coral a chance to refuse. Then he reached up around his neck and wrapped him in a gentle hug. He had to stretch a bit to make up for the height difference. Coral froze in astonishment, then tentatively hugged Lem back. He relaxed gradually, finally closing his eyes and giving a deep sigh. Lem tightened his hold, and Quarrel responded in kind. They stood quietly for a few long moments. Rain thudded on the walls, not quite muted by the thick stone. Lumafly light flickered softly from a globe on the ceiling. Quarrel's breath hitched, and he leaned into Lem, who shifted to better prop up the taller bug. Lem ran his thumb back and forth along the grooves of Quarrel's shell, frowning to himself as Coral shuddered with silent sobs. This continued for some time. Even after Coral had exhausted his tears, neither Bug had any pressing desire to disengage. It was Coral who broke the silence. Thank you, he whispered. I actually haven't done this in... Well... He paused thoughtfully. Huh. I can't remember the last time I've been embraced. Lem grunted. Hmm, sounds like you haven't been keeping very good company. He laughed softly. <laughs> I suppose I haven't. Not that I kept much company at all before coming back. Hmm. Lem tapped absently at Quirrell's shell. A few things, he began. Oh? First of all, you didn't know what they were doing. A few people knew, and you weren't one of them. Otherwise, the whole mess was kept extremely secret. It's as simple as that. If you knew, you'd have done something. You didn't know, so you couldn't. Coral hummed noncommittally. Second, yes, we've all seen death, but this wasn't from the infection. Not some mysterious force. Not the ancient shells that line the walls. That's just hollow nest. This is horrifying. It's murder, a massacre, a slaughter. Intelligent bugs thought out what they were doing and did it. And they hid it, too. So they must have known it was wrong. I suppose. Lem rolled his eyes. My point is, you're beating yourself up for being sensitive, Quirrell. Frankly, I'd have been more concerned if you'd brushed the whole thing off. Which, by the way, you did try to do. Ah, uh, so I did, he admitted sheepishly. Yes, so stop doing that. Your horrified reaction was perfectly appropriate. It is horrifying and sad. Coral dug his fingers into Lem's fuzz. Okay. He turned his head away. You didn't fall apart he said, sounding resentful. Lem huffed. I didn't know any of those bugs. Wasn't even hatched until after this whole dump became a crypt. Besides, I didn't understand what had happened until you explained it. To me, it was just another pile of old carapaces. Biggest pile I've seen, I'll admit, but otherwise not terrifically notable. That's fair. He took a deep breath and pulled away, smiling sadly. He bent to briefly tap his forehead against Lem's. Thank you, Lem. He gave his hands a squeeze before letting go. Better now? Coral nodded, readjusting his bandana. He looked up, suddenly serious. I do still want to go back. Lem sputtered. Now? Why? Coral raised his hands. No, no, later, not today. I want to know what happened. Truly, there must be some form of records there. He gave him a wary look. I'm not sure that's a good idea. 
He shrugged, almost embarrassed. It'll be worse not knowing. I just want to see what they were doing. He tangled his fingers together. And I'm hoping I might get some closure. I just know it'll haunt me otherwise. I need to know. Lem crossed his arms. Mm, all right, fine. But you have to wait at least three days, and when you do go, I'm coming with you. Quirrell twitched in response. Oh, you don't have to do that. Well, I am, he said, daring Quirrell to challenge him. Instead, he grinned and grabbed him in a crushing hug. Thank you, my friend, he said, voice cracking. I love you. Of course, Quirrell, he mumbled, returning the gesture with a soft smile. I love you too.